Hey guys, check this out. This is the fully assembled Mega Squirt PCB or printed circuit board. Uh, this is Mega Squirt One on a um, board version 2.2, so it's uh, it's the oldest model. Um, I'm going with Mega Squirt One because I'm only converting the fuel system from CIS to regular electronic fuel injection. I'm not going to do anything with the ignition system or anything right now. Um, but that may change in the future. So this board isn't anything special, it's just a regular circuit board with a processor, it's got some LEDs, lots of capacitors, resistors, and things like that. Um, this was a lot of work, and in the future I don't think that I would do this again because it was so much work. Um, it may be easier for other people, I'm not very good at soldering, I'm certainly not an electrician, um, but you can actually buy these things pre-assembled for like $150 or $200 more. And if you're planning on doing a fuel injection conversion, you know that you're going to end up spending quite a bit of money anyway, so $150 to $200 more probably isn't that big of a deal. And I actually wish I would have done that. But anyways, um, so it has the map sensor which is down there. Uh, it's got a serial port for interfacing with your computer to put the firmware on the processor, which is that. And then of course, um, we have this thing, I don't remember what it's called, DB something, 27? I don't know. But this plugs into the relay box, or if you're going to do, like what I'm going to do, is this going to be, this is going to go straight into the um, harness, into the components, and put some fuses and things. But anyways, so that's it. Um, nothing special. I still need to load the processor with the firmware and program it and things like that, so that's kind of where I am now. And then this guy is the mega stimulator and this is supposed to be a optional component but it's recommended I would actually say that it's absolutely mandatory because it allows you to not only test the circuit board um, and ECU but it allows you to simulate a lot of the inputs that a motor would normally send like you have the RPM and they're all potentiometers so if you're using the software you can actually see the values change real time as you turn the potentiometers and you can change like the RPM from PNP to NPM and the O2 sensor to narrow band to wide band. This is CO2, so this would be the air fuel mixture. Um, TPS, throttle position sensor, um, that's air temperature, and I think that's coolant temperature. And it's powered by, I'm using just like a regular um, wall adapter that plugs right in. It's got to be 9 volts. Um, and it plugs in where the harness would normally plug in right there. And you plug it into the computer with that guy. Um, but that's it. That's where I am. Um, I'm actively working on trying to program this thing. It's been a lot of work because I actually don't have a computer that has a serial port. And I'm trying to use a USB adapter, and I've read that those don't work so well. So I think that I'm going to have to end up actually buying a new laptop, just like an older one with a serial port, to see if I can get this thing to work. Um, but that's where I am. I'm also making some modifications to the engine. I haven't recorded that. Um, but I will, and um, and that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm hoping that once I get this thing programmed and I get all the components in the engine, that I can go ahead and fire it up and take a good video of that, but I'm pretty close to finishing this up. I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and um, hopefully I can get this finished up pretty soon. There you go.